Hey everybody, I'm really, really happy to welcome you today to another of my Being Human, Inspiring People with Inspiring Stories sessions. And today I want to welcome you to the wonderful work of this beautiful goddess sitting in front of me, Mariposa. And I came across you and your work, Mariposa, via Instagram. Um, before we go into the story, I'd just love to give you the space to say hi. Mm. Hi, sister. Hi, everyone that is tuning in with us. And it's such a pleasure to have these platforms for us to share who we are, our techniques. And so, hi, and thank you. Well, you know, I know that we're going to have an exploration of what matters to both of us. And I'm going to frame the context of this within this series of why I was called to reach out to you, because my impulse to reach out may well be somebody else's. Um, mm -hmm. Your page is called Respira Tu Amor, Breathe Your Love, and it's a multidimensional approach to the expansion of the mind, body and spirit using these three ancient powerful tools of breathwork, Tantra and yoga. Now you personally, I know a little bit about you because I've looked it up. You were born in Mexico where you were raised until you were 18 into a family of people who were already switched on by the sounds of it into some of these practices. So vegetarian yogis and spiritual growth was held as a high value personal achievement. I love that because not many families in my experience hold that as the uh, the measure of spiritual achievement. So let's start there. What was it like for you growing up as a little girl in the world that you were born into? Ah, to be honest, I feel so honored and humbled to be able to, to choose this family and have this family to embrace me since I was young. And um, just knowing that a spiritual growth it's so important because for me it has been so important so in my in my family in the table of the house we speak about a spiritual growth but not a spirituality in the religious but a spirituality as a, a a lifestyle of living so my dad yeah he's a um neutrologist so he heals people through food and my mom is a therapist um so but the forgiveness therapy so she heals people through forgiveness so having if you ask me who are my teachers to be honest my parents because they are the ones that they really hold me in these belief systems and on this knowledge since i was little so for me now as a facilitator and as a teacher and as a guide I have big roots mm. down because my family were were always there and they're still there. Like I've been sharing all the techniques with them still. They are my students, they're still my teachers and we're still learning from each other. So it has been really liberated. I've been feeling so understood. Just, yeah, so honored that's the word yeah that's quite unusual you know to because because what most people come through with in my experience is that their family of origin is the place where they are challenged where they have to um meet their shadow and rub up against the things that are difficult and i'm not assuming that you haven't had challenges within your family system uh, maybe we'll get to that maybe not but how beautiful that they are have been your teachers and I and I heard you say they are your students now so have they been partaking in your experiences of breath work and other practices as you've grown and evolved them then yes they're actually the first students of my life because as soon as I learned these techniques I am like parents sister my fam my brothers and sister too I'm like you guys need to like just learn these techniques because it's changing my life and i want you guys to practice that and they're so open actually my mom and my sister they were like in the beginning when i started to share these medicines they were there like holding space um helping me to hold space for others 
And we have taken courses together, especially in sacred sexuality, healing the lineage, not just healing me, but like healing the feminine lineage that comes through that is my sister and my mom. So I feel like we're doing such a deep work and mm. they're my best friends. Like they are everything for me. So I feel like humbled and honored to be able to share this with my family. Mm, that's really heartwarming. Yeah, really mm. beautiful. So you mentioned your sister and you talked about brothers. So you have siblings, how many? So I have two brothers and one sister. Um, my sister, she is a amazing channeler, um, paint, she paints, she channels like information and she like plus in, in painting. Um, so yeah, my sister is like my soulmate. We, we are so connected and she actually used to be, um, having really deep panic attacks and what heal, like cure her, it was breath work hey that's amazing yeah so oh, she has they want to come back to that yeah <laughs> so she has what sorry um no i mean that it's just has been she has been like such a a student for me and a teacher also but like especially for me to like practice all these techniques on my sister and seeing her transformation it has been so mm. profound yeah, and no, I really want to name here that in, in that description that when we are delivering, facilitating and teaching breath work, we we usually are both the student and the facilitator and uh, sorry, the student and the teacher at the same time, because if we're learning from the people who are there, not, you know, of course, our responsibility is to hold a sacred and safe space for people. But the humility comes in the fact that these people are bringing things forward that we go, oh, OK. I've learned something about anxiety now and I've learned what we can use and I've learned what you felt in that space. And I notice a few times whilst we've been talking already, you'll use the, the phrase medicines about things being your medicines. What do you consider to be the true medicines in this world, in your world? In my world, the true medicines are the medicines that we hold inside of ourselves, the medicine that we can activate it within that we don't need anything external for us to feel better so i mean for me it has been the most powerful medicines like breath work embodiment tantra that's why i'm able to share because this is something that i i live every single day i heal myself every single day i remember who i am every single day through these beautiful techniques that they exist within myself so this is this creates a lot of freedom just to remembering that I am the medicine and I don't need any substances in the external for me to be healed. So thank you for explaining that. Um, I've got two questions that arise from that. And I'm going to come back to the piece about not needing external things for you to heal because I think that's really important for a lot of people who'll be listening, who kind of are really seeking, you know, I've been a seeker, I've certainly quested for the things that will help me heal. And ultimately, although they have been external things I've been drawn to the healing takes place on the inside. So I want to start again at the beginning there with my first part of my question, which was, how did you get into breath work? Mm, I love this question. So I was a big seeker in the outside, just like a lot of us, um, traveling, even taking ancestral plants in South America, um, even finding different relationships to complete me, um, money, just like, especially traveling. I was really, really like obsessed with traveling and I took place traveling like around 10 years I was just like living in each place for around six months staying there working sharing and then moving to another place and then keep um just for me traveling in the outside it took me a space to travel inwards because like being in different cultures being outside of my comfort zone not having identity in different places in the world 
I discovered who I was. I really discovered and I started to question myself who I am and how do I am mirroring myself in totally different people. I will discover a totally different part of myself. So for me, I say that was my school. The school, it was like coming inwards and remembering who I am. And through discovering um, and trying to find that answer in the outside of myself and inside and going to a journey of traveling so much, I, by then, I already practiced um, yoga. I, my mom is a yoga teacher since I was young. I had a yoga practice since I was like maybe 10 years old. I loved yoga, um, stretching, embodiment. So from the yoga side, I knew a little bit of pranayama, but not much. So I was already practicing a little bit of like pranayama, simple techniques. And then in Guatemala, in the lake of Atitlan, this beautiful, powerful place where volcanoes are, I took um, another, like I took my first breathwork experience. I didn't know what was breathwork. And I had the most powerful experience ever with my own inner medicine and by that moment I already tried it a lot of ancestral plants and I was really fascinated about DMT the molecular like what is DMT and I start I already had a lot of studies about DMT that we hold DMT within ourselves there's DMT everywhere um, every leaf everything that has life has DMT but that was the first time when I was able to access my own DMT, that is the spiritual molecular. Mm. And I had a deep outside experience. And that moment, I stopped taking everything outside of myself. I really, I'm like, I get good pumps because that was the moment when I just like literally had a break down, I mean, a breakdown, but in a beautiful way. And that's when I actually, my name as Mariposa came into my life because when I did discover that I was the medicine, I'm actually my own ancestral plant and everything I was being looking in the outside, I told you with myself, I opened my wings and I became free as a butterfly. And that's when I went to Thailand and I was like, I must discover all of these breathwork techniques because I want to start to teach and one is a specific, I don't know which one. So I discover a lot of them and then I um, discover some of breath and that's when I got certified and then I create my own technique. And that's the moment when I'm incredibly passionate about observing how people transform through this beautiful technique. And I transform myself through them. I love that you said that always the students because yes, yeah, like they transform and I transform. This is when we can really connect that we are one, we are collective. So them healing, we heal ourselves too as, as teachers. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, and I know for a fact that so many breath workers, so many of us came to it through our own expanded consciousness moments where we really realized kind of what was inside of us and that we could access it through the breath so um it's a powerful share um i'd love to know who you did that first ever session with in uh guatemala who was that um, with it was inside of a, it was like more than a breath work it was like a pranayama course uh, yeah. um lauren it was her name it was inside of, she's not really well known. She she lives in like Guatemala. She doesn't move from there. And she holds this like on the side, just yeah. this like powerful experience. Um, Laurie Manley is her name. But yeah. And did you did you have any idea when you went into that session what was going to unfold for you? Not idea. I follow myself a lot with my intuition. Um, yeah. That's why I I connected with my intuition traveling so much, like where being so connected to the subtle energy to know where should I go, where should I be, and like just like making my own decisions because I was a solo traveler for so long without having anyone in the outside to tell me what to do. So I remember that I I read these like it was a like a seven days like 
it was they she um promoted as a pranayama but for me it was like mo mostly like a breath work because it was a really intense breath work technique that it was every single day and the last day she make us like literally like just open our hands and hold our breath i'm really fascinated about um holding our breath and that's when i literally like i went to another world i went to another dimension I left my body, I had visions. And when I came back, I was crying, not even like just crying of bliss and love. And I was like, I, I am my own medicine. I, I am the answer. Everything I've been looking for in the outside is within myself. Mm, beautiful. And so for those who don't know, Mariposa means butterfly. And in that transformation, you found yourself um, I love, I love how you framed that in travel that you would see these different aspects of yourself reflected back because you would lose identity and that kind of ego identity that we associate with a fixed place and a fixed way of being. As I know from traveling when we get there and maybe we don't know the language or we can't communicate in the same ways, it strips everything right back. So I love that you brought that in. And the other piece that I um, want to just dig into a little bit more now is you talked about this, what I consider to be a transcendent experience, and we can have those in breath work and the integration that takes place takes place in and through the body. And that's a huge part of your work. So again, one of the things that called me to go, oh, what's this woman offering? And what's it all about was this, this exploration of Tantra in the presumably in the original or true sense, but maybe not, maybe in the new sense. But, you know, I see you on your pages and in your work as being a woman who really embodies a lot of sensuality. And as somebody who's explored a lot of my own sexuality, I feel as though for me, the sensuality piece was the piece that I forgot about. So I'd go on these explorations because I was healing my past and I was healing my story and my wounds but i forgot about the sensual piece and you seem to embody that so please tell us a little bit more about the importance of embodiment to you and the place of tantra within your work hmm. yeah so for me embodiment um centrality it's a lifestyle it's a way that we walk it's a way where we speak it's something that we embrace um and it's sensuality is senses it comes from the word of senses sensuality embodiment is like embracing and using our physical realm so what, how i see tantra and this philosophy is bringing heaven on earth so instead of trying and to escape heaven i mean to escape earth and go constantly into heaven that actually even Sometimes we can do that in ancestral plants or even breath work, just go and leave the body and like find all of these answers. But like, what happens when you like, when you come back into your body and then what? What do you do with all of this information? You just realize and download and embodiment come, come and takes place where it's like using all of this information through your body, like using your senses, like celebrating this physical realm. Like it's beautiful to, yes, to remember that we are gods, but what about if we bring all of that knowledge down into this earth through passion, through embodying and allowing every emotion to be alive, like everything that has to do with being this human experience we celebrate it in, in the work I do. We celebrate the shadows. We celebrate sadness. We celebrate sex. We celebrate passion, sensuality. But we celebrate it in a way where you celebrate within yourself. You are not seeking to find something in the outside that I think it's so common in this, I mean, this world and the system that is constantly this thought of like, I must find someone in the outside to be sensual with mm. or even sexuality. I don't have a partner, so I'm not going to be um, sensual, sexual active because of that. Or I'm just going to leave my body and not take care of my physical body because um, I don't have a partner. 
So it's the opposite. It's actually falling in love with yourself, embracing and remembering that you are actually feminine and masculine and you hold your inner marriage within yourself. You are complete. And you, when you really embrace that and you leave that, your life literally is differently. Like the way you attract um, everything, opportunities, your dreams, the work you do, your health, the way you communicate, the way you become so magnetic, it's, it's magical. And yeah, I'm so passionate about this work too. <laughs> I can hear your passion. And I would really like to, let's, let's imagine that there's somebody watching this, maybe several people watching this who feel really disconnected from their sensuality and don't know where to start. So, you know, somebody like you, who's well on the way, who understands that bliss and that magnetism and the cultivation of the inner eros, as I call it, um, what would you suggest to people who are struggling to even know what that feels like or to find that? Are there any small daily practices or regular things that they could do for themselves? So first of all, what I invite everyone is to first of all, accept where are you at is perfect. Um, not seeing ourselves as like, I shouldn't be here. Like I'm broken. Something is wrong with me. Oh my God, Mariposa, it's so embodied. It's like, no, like wherever you are at at this moment, accept it and just embrace it and take responsibility from it. And from that space of acceptance, you can decide to just start to just even like spend more time by yourself, like just connect more with your senses and start to eat delicious food that makes you feel happy, create intimacy within yourself. So once again, like sometimes we can have these fantasies of the love in the outside and it's good, but what about if we find that love in the inside? How do you will dress for that love that you really want to meet? That is maybe, yes, think about it that is outside, but like bring it inside and be like, okay, I want to dance for my lover. I'm going to eat for my lover. I'm going to start to, first of all, accept that your body, it's, it's a temple. And it's beautiful as it is. It shouldn't be differently than how it is. So mainly accepting the process where you are at. And from that space, start to transform it through loving yourself as it is in loving, embracing even your emotions, wherever you are at. Mm. Yeah, so, so really, I hear I, I hear that. And I think that that self acceptance of where we are now is important, because I feel that a lot of people end up in places of resistance and and the resistance creates struggle and the struggle creates more resistance, because there's this kind of belief that I'll never get to where I want to be because where I want to be or how I want to look or what kind of level of fitness I want or what kind of partner I want is so far in the future or somewhere else that I can't really imagine getting there. So I'll give up. And then mm -hmm. and people miss these magical moments of day to day intimacy. Um, does the tantric element significantly come into your offer? Because I know now that you're about to start training students in breath work. In, in your technique, the respirato amor, breathe your love. So would you like to speak a little bit about that and how you bring in what's important to you into that training? Yeah, so um, I take place tantra into my training um, in so many ways. So first of all, like for me, um, being a teacher is not just like be and teach, it's actually embody what you teach so um, on my trainings uh, once when people become facilitators is like you living what we are teaching so mm -hmm. it's it's a first like an insight journey and through that um i mean on my trainings it's like a lot of there's a lot of the techniques of tantra because like a lot of awareness into our chakras into um the so people that don't know what our chakras chakras are like circles of energy and we have seven of them and when we start to create awareness into where are located 
um, what, are, what are the benefits and just even creating conscious of where are located, you start to unblock them. Mm. So um, when you start to create and unblock them and clean the chakras, um, especially on the breath word that I use, that it's like you start to circulate the energy and the breath through your body, through your chakras and on respiratum or breath work, there is retentions. So that means we exhale and we empty the lungs and we hold our breath on that exhale. So when that happens, we like bring roots down into the earth. We like anchor ourselves into the roots, into this physical realm, into like this human experience, into like groundiness, like being grounded. And then when and then there's a second retention. So we inhale and we hold the breath on the inhale. And that's a deeply tantra experience because a part of tantra is transforming sexual energy into spiritual purposes. So when, when we inhale and we hold the breath on the inhale, we bring all that energy up into the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is consciousness, is pure god and light is who we really are really it's like this is spiritual realm so we flush that energy up so and people experience like deeply body orgasms and once again like an orgasm it's it's an energy it's like an state it's like it has nothing to do just with sexuality maybe we did use your sexual energy but we bring that like that energy into all of your body to experience that like that bliss I'm sure a lot of us if you experience an orgasm it's like a bliss state it's like it's oneness it's like connection you even there's no thoughts there's no mind so imagine if you can bring all of that energy in your body through breath work and especially for a lot of people that they have never experienced orgasms and another part that I want to touch is that we don't need anyone in the outside for us to experience this energy that is like orgasmic bliss energy. So taking responsibility and finding our inner beloved, our mm -hmm. inner passion and yes, all of these goodies. <laughs> mm, beautiful. One of, one of my dear friends says that because when we talk about partnership and relationship, she says, I feel so content on the inside because because I live in a perpetual state of bliss. I live with that feeling of being the beloved and having the beloved. So there's no seeking. And then if anything comes towards her, it is that magnetism, it is that ease and that exchange and attraction. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, why do you do what you do in the way that you run breath work? What makes it different to other systems and why is that important to you? What do you want people mm. to get who, who work with you and train with you? Ah, uh, so first of all, that um, my breath work, it's not just a technique, it's a ceremony. Right. So since people arrive into the breath work experience, they're, they're arriving into a portal. So I use a lot of um, shamanism tools like me being in Mexico and me being from Mexico, um, having this knowledge, I use a lot of copal that is ever seen from, um, from a tree. The Mayas use it a lot. So since people are entering, like cleansing people energetically to for them to enter into a portal. And from that space, um, we do a lot of, um, first of all, like creating a safe container. So for us to really go into a deep experience, we must feel safe. Mm -hmm. If our inner child and our, if we don't, if we don't feel safe, there is not going to be relaxation. There's not going to be openness. So for me, it's so, so important to create a safe container to the collective. So I create um, a couple of games of conscious way to connect, conscious way of relate um eye gazing breathing with others just by being in the presence with each other and being like i see you like i'm in the right place doing the right thing with the right people and i'm safe this is where i must be and being on my body it's safe so um i start to build it up in a group container 
through through a couple of games, even touch. I bring some touch, even like asking for what we want. So just even like starting to connect our throat chakra with our needs and starting to come into our inner world and just creating that space, people feel safe. They're just like authentic. They feel like people, they are, there's no mask. They're like able to be seen as they are. So, and then from that space, we, we, I go into a lot of the science behind my breathwork technique. So for the right side of the hemisphere that we want to like understand what's going to happen if our body, I explain specifically what happens in the biology way. And from that space, people go into the experience of breath work. It's around like 40 minutes to 15 minutes of breathing. And after they, and I bring a lot of like drum. I love using my drum. I have a shamanic flute. So I bring these elements. And then at the end, grounding it. Like after they experience that, how I bring them back into the earth how do we integrate all of these experience like they feel so burnable they just went through so much so like how do we really contain that that energy and ground ourselves for us to be outside and be walking on the streets so it's a whole ceremony um and i teach people how to first of all them become teachers every day not just on the on the ceremony but how to embody our inner teachers because we're all teachers really so i really hear what you uh what your intentions are when people enter a ceremonial space with you which is um Mm -hmm. profound and beautiful and i love that you place importance on the safety and the integration very very uh special um and in terms of the students that you teach um is it is it the things that you've been talking about so the inclusion of the awareness of sensuality and tantra that make your training different to other trainings because you've talked about being trained in soma you've talked about certainly with me before this call um your interest in wim hof and your use of the wim hof app and and his pro- practices so how how have you kind of made a decision where you've gone well i really value those uh practices and those things that i've learned and here is my stamp on it. What, what have you put onto your training that is important to you for people to receive? Hmm. I feel like my energy, it's quite like feminine and masculine. I feel like already breathwork can be really masculine of the way that we hold spades. It's a, it's a really active journey. So I feel like Um, connecting with our feminine energy of like creating a really safe container that everything is welcome Um, even orgasmic energy is welcome so since the beginning I started to allow people to start to get into their bodies moving their Mm -hmm. hips like moving just starting to breathe and exhale with their mouth open just like ah and if they sound like it's really sexual like even start to change the belief system that like ah, that's sexual you know so allowing people to feel that and just that I experience a lot of like a lot of people having a lot of pleasure and mm. feeling guilty about it like why should I'm feeling like sexual energy like why I'm feeling orgasmic energy so that's when I was I brought a lot of tantra because I start to experience that people were really activated on their sexual energy and they start to unlock a lot of repress, repressing belief systems. Mm. So the energy start to flow perfectly. So that's why when I started to like embrace and bring more like tantra tools and allow and start to normalize um, this beautiful energy that is quite, it's orgasmic energy. And that's our mag like the creative life force who Mm. we are literally is the most powerful energy of all so i actually bring um elements of that like what is like creative life force energy how do we can even create like sex magic it's when you manifest your dreams through the creative life force energy of creating whatever Mm. we want Mm. thank you so much um i i completely agree with you that um 
in my experience, a lot of people, when they start to feel what we might call arousal, feel what comes with it is guilt and shame and, you know, secrecy and restriction and shutting it down quickly, because many of us um, are not taught to cultivate that and are not taught that it's okay to be with that, or it's been taken from us and misused by other people within the distortions of the the mainstream system. So I think that this kind of thing is absolutely essential Mm -hmm. out there in the world that we can begin to heal what's been broken and reclaim what's been taken in the most beautiful way. So I really want to thank you for doing that Mm -hmm. in your work. Yeah, for bringing that forward. Um, So is there anything that you would like to share at the moment about, you know, your visions for this sounds very grandiose, but your visions for humanity, your visions for yourself, perhaps starting there, um, as we come towards the end of our our sharing time? Mm. So the vision for humanity is to allow everyone to remember that we are complete, that we are not broken, that nothing is wrong with us. And that everything we've been looking in the outside of ourselves is within ourselves. And that we are our own teachers. We are our own gurus. We are even the love of our lives. And to create a change in the outside, we must create a change in the inside. And our self-love, our self-awareness, our accepting not just pushing away all the shadows or the bad emotions, but embracing the wholeness of this human experience and allow ourselves to celebrate because we choose to come down into this earth to live this human experience. So let's celebrate this, the wholeness of who we are. And each one of us, we're so authentic. Don't try to be like somebody else. Um, I'm not your teacher. I'm just a channel and I'm just teaching myself every single day. I'm just, everything I teach is the, what I need the most. So I'm so humble and honored to be able to have all of you guys for me to remember myself, all of these tools and that everyone is a teacher. And I'm so happy for people to start teaching whatever they want to start to sharing because they have their own unique um, magic and medicine. So that's what Mm -hmm. I want to share. And that's thank you so much for creating this platform, sister, for all of us to come together to share beautiful techniques. Oh, you're so welcome. That was such a beautiful vision. I really felt it. And I felt your um, humble and honest desire for people to really feel that within themselves. And I love Mm -hmm. what you said that we can't change things on the outside until we have started with the change on the inside. So please tell us, uh, where can people find you? Yeah, so you can um, follow me on my Instagram, that is mariposa.alcalde. Um, on my website, that is respiratuamor.com. Um, I do retreats all over the world. I do intimacy retreats for couples also here in, in Mexico. I sell my breath work online if you want to buy it. Um, it's there. Um, and I, I'm always sharing my medicine in lots of festivals. And yeah, I have my training. Um, if you feel with, feel resonating with my energy, with my words, um, you can become a teacher and expand this beautiful technique to the world. So yeah, just write me a message. I love engaging with, with people in Instagram. So just send me a message if you have any question. And yes, that's, that's all. Mm. So thank you so much, Mariposa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, For everybody who's watching and listening, we're going to put the links for today where you can find Mariposa in the information below today's episode. Please go check her out because I think anybody who has a big heart for a vision for self-healing and recognizing that it's an inside job is definitely worth looking into. And if you're somebody who struggles with accessing your sensuality, and uh, connecting that with your breath then please again go look her up find out what she's about it's been a pleasure to talk to you thank you thank you